everybody. Hi um, guys. I'm Elias. I'm Jensa. Welcome back. You finally have both of us sitting down in a full length video together again instead of Helter Skelter running around a few minutes here, a few minutes there. What have you been up to since our last video we sat down and did a week ago? Work. <laughs> um, I've mentioned this in a couple videos, I think, but we have opposite work schedules and it's rare for us to get evenings and whatnot together or even a weekend is even more rare. But today we're finally going to talk about the big topic I've been telling you guys we've been working on. And that's something we've been struggling with for a very long time. We got married on... July... 6, 2012. And as of this past July 6th, it's been four years that we got married and we have been actively trying to conceive a child ever since. It's been a very long, uneventful four years. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, mostly downs. Mostly downs. Um, we were trying on our own, trying on our own, no results. And finally, I started going to, because I got health insurance again after I started teaching, roughly a year into us trying to conceive, we went to an OBG and got a checkup. And I hadn't been having regular periods since... Forever. 2011? Well, really irregular, and then before that, you technically were having... Problems like, then. You were having double... Um, double drops, you yeah, said. Yeah, I was... <sighs> Throughout my teenage and young adult years, I had sometimes two ovula ovulations a month. Um, Never knew why. That's all I was told. I just have, I'm one of those women that have a double drop. That's exactly what the OB I saw when I was younger told me. And then in November of 2011, I was in a horrible car accident the week after Thanksgiving. Like seven months before we were to get married. Yes. I was in the middle of my first practicum for student teaching, also working on my master's degree at, in education at the time, and Ramias had brought me back from visiting with him for Thanksgiving to my apartment because my vehicle wasn't doing so good with the travel, so he would double run back and forth, drop me off, pick me up on weekends, and I don't even think we had set, it, I think it had been maybe an hour or two since we had said goodbye. I got in my vehicle. It was okay for local travel. And I went to go meet a classmate for coffee. And when I pulled out of a green light, I came off the interstate and at the top of the ramp is a light and it had been red so I was stopped. I was the first car in the line at the red light. And when it turned green, I went to go. Checked both ways anyway because it's a it's a, uh, Four, well. it's, it's a four lane road and you cross two or three lanes to get to the correct side that I needed to get on. I looked to my left, clear, looked to my right, clear, started to pull forward. And then out of my peripheral vision was coming at, coming at a fast speed at my driver's side door, a Ford Escape. The driver was, the driver had come off the other side, the eastbound side of the interstate, because I'd come off the west side, and, uh, west side? Anyway. <laughs> My students would be proud of me for that, anyway. Um, she came off the opposite direction, interstate blew through a red light and would have blown through another red light had she not 
t-boned my Jeep at 60 miles an hour. I wasn't even doing five miles an hour. I was barely out of the gate, essentially. She spun me four times through the intersection. Thank God there weren't any other vehicles. And I don't remember anything after that for a few minutes. The only thing I remember is being told by, I swear, my father's voice, baby girl, hold on, and feeling a pair of strong arms pull me back against my driver's seat, which I don't know if that was a mechanism, just my body kind of like psychologically protecting itself or not, but it's a good thing I had that sensation because my seatbelt failed and I could have gone through the windshield, but I didn't because force of nature kept me pinned in the seat during the spinning. Yeah, whenever the car hit, it crushed the locking mechanism against between the seat and the center console and unhooked it. Yeah, I was completely completely knocked out. Luckily, uh, the person in the car behind me was a nurse and another person on the other side of the, at a, of the road at a different light for the same intersection was an uh, EMT who was off duty. So the fates and the great divine were looking over us that day, I believe. But ever since then, my problems with fertility increased I would say tenfold and nobody could figure out what was wrong nobody could figure out what was wrong and I was told your body's in shock it from the accident it'll start back up well things just kept getting worse and worse and fast forward about two years later this is when we finally decided to start seeing an OBG because we weren't concern conceiving on our own and, and the fact that she was not ovulating at all. I went two years, almost two years without a period at one point. And I was just kind of waiting for my body to restart itself and it never did. So finally went to the OB and she did a pregnancy test per protocol because it was my first visit. And the test there said negative, but she did some blood work and was again per protocol part of her initial um, visit blood work, did a blood test for pregnancy, and for whatever reason, it came back positive. But she did a second test to check the quantity of hormone, because the first one was a qualitative test, a yes or no. The second test she decided to do was a quantitative to see how much um, pregnancy hormone was actually in my blood, and it came back as zero. So we basically had, I tested for a false positive, and we could never figure out why. And, that's it. and she told us that she was pregnant before she actually had... The second test done. Yeah. So we were very, very upset, but we didn't give up hope. She referred us to a different doctor within the same practice who handled persons with m minor fertility issues. And we worked with him, I would say, for another two years, two, three years, yeah. no result. And he went, went through Clomid. Uh, I think we did six cycles of Clomid total. And there was other I mean, we medication should, we one should, to get the little phileas to... Uh, I was on metformin, which is a diabetic medication, but it's also used to make the cilia in the female reproductive system active. So I was on that for a long time, and no result. And we finally told him, we need to figure out what's wrong, and he did a laparoscopic surgery to do some research, and he knew... His, his initial guess what I was I was polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. Which creates, for nobody, it, to those who don't know, it creates these little cysts around the uterus and... Ovaries and oh, various other places. And it can affect, I guess, fertility, but it's just... Well, yeah. Not, it, not only 
do the cysts themselves potentially block a fertile cycle? The scarring from the cysts bursting when they burst instead of being reabsorbed is also a problem. Right. Well, he couldn't figure out why I was polycystic. So he started referring us to somebody who solely practices high level infer in you know fertility treatments the first doctor we went to we traveled two and a half hours was told to come an hour and a half earlier than we were supposed to have ar arrived waited and waited only for the doctor to walk in the room take one look at me and all but laugh in our faces because of my weight I wanted that day I come. and proceeded to sit through a huge beratement from him and then a nurse about my weight and how basically they told me it was unethical, unethical for them to let us conceive by their practice.